That's good. Okay, we got the, uh, we'll give it another minute till. Okay, ready? Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to our next to the last meeting of the year. And uh, should be an interesting meeting today, uh, talking about uh, bonds. So uh, let's get started with the uh, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I just got an email and I, uh, evidently the COVID cases are on the rise. Uh, it peaked, I think 119 new cases for the day yesterday. And uh, they're, they're attributing that to the post Thanksgiving, uh, which they expected. So yeah. let's give a moment to hope that, you know, this passes and uh, the numbers start dropping down. And with the vaccines that are hopefully coming out in the beginning of the year, for our group uh, that we get this under control and start being able to live a uh, somewhat normal life again. Thank you. Uh, Joe, that, yeah. that, 100, that 119, is that new positive tests or are they admissions at Sanford Hospital? So I, I don't know. It just came out on the paper and I, uh, on the email uh, and I didn't read the whole thing other than the fact that uh, it's not in the ho hospital. Uh, they gave a different number. I think this was just testing positive uh, okay. in Stanford. All right. Say, so, Joe, th this is Carl. Do, do you see just a flag on the screen or I'm getting a little toolbar at the bottom. Do you see the toolbar on your screen? No, I don't see the toolbar. We just get the flag. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, go to our next slide. Uh, Bruce Huffline passed away. Uh, it was on November 29th, 81 years old. He was born in Brooklyn in 1939, graduated from Brown University in 1962, and earned his MBA from NYU. He worked for J.C. Penney for many years, and then he ran his own sales business until his retirement in 2001. Bruce loved travel, bridge games, ski trips, pool parties, and holiday get-togethers. He was an active member of the Trinity Church in Greenwich, a volunteer at the Neighbor to Neighbor Food Pantry, and an avid curler at the Ardsley Curling Club and a member of SMAS since December 2019. Uh, would anybody, uh, I don't know Bruce, but if anybody knows him, uh, knew him, would like to uh, say a few words. Okay. Well, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, December birthdays. 
Um, we got a number of uh, nonagenarians, Charlie Junta, Louis K, Jim Russo, and Bill Johnson. Uh, God bless you guys and happy birthday and happy birthday to all the young fellas that are listed uh, on the, uh, the roster. And uh, Jerry, are you with us today? Of course, and to sing since it's my birthday. <laughs> yeah, well, you can sing to yourself. <laughs> no, I'm going to sing to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Will you lead us, Jerry, happy. please? There you go. Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear fellow. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. And many and, more. And to you, too. <laughs> Thank you, Jer. Uh, membership anniversaries. Uh, 30 years, Bob Langenhan. 20 years, Mason Rosenthal. Uh, 10 years, Ed Tatro. And five years, Ray Birnbaum. Uh, Ray, are you with us today? Ray usually jumps in a little later. Okay. And uh, today is the uh, first day of Hanukkah. And I behalf of myself and the officers uh, wish everyone a happy Hanukkah and uh, enjoy tomorrow, the uh, Tomorrow season. is the first day. It starts tonight. It starts tonight, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a board meeting for both current and incoming board members uh, and uh, Steve, when you send out the invitation, make sure that you you know you get all the new members on it uh, yeah. also. Uh, is... Okay, I thought somebody was this. Okay, so uh, we'll be discussing at the board meeting. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, financials, uh, we'll be able to have the actual uh, 2020 and uh, a look ahead uh, at 2021. And uh, as mentioned previously, Bill Johnson made a very substantial donation to the SMAS. And uh, we'll look at uh, do how we want to utilize that donation. And uh, Bill had made a suggestion uh, that we will discuss also. Uh, another idea, get ideas for, as I asked last week, if anybody's come up with anything for uh, some activities uh, during the first quarter, right through, probably right through to uh, June, I don't think we'll be doing anything uh, normal till then. But uh, any safe activities, uh, you know, maybe even uh, some kind of a field trip that uh, we could uh, go reasonably uh, close by. We can all travel in our own cars and maintain some safe distancing. Uh, doesn't have to be anything, you know, exotic, but just a, something that we can get together uh, besides just the walk. So, uh, if anybody has any ideas, uh, please let us know. I mean, you know, there's 200 members, uh, 100 plus active, and somebody's probably got an idea that. Uh, be better than uh, a dozen or so offices. Hey, Joe, um, Joe, yeah, Stu, who's that? Stu Madison, quick quickie here. When you and I were on with the Fairfield guys a couple of weeks ago, one guy mentioned that the West, the uh, Greenwich group had gone to some local place as an outing. You remember what that was? Uh, no, I don't. 
Oh, okay. They, they managed to get in and out, so I'll see if I can find it. Well, we can. Uh, I, I mean, if something you can do is just email Bob Phillips. Okay. Good. He's Greenwich, and and see you know. But we'll bring that up at the board meeting. Okay. Uh, we also want to discuss the developing a program for uh, contacting isolated members or members that uh, can't uh, come or show up in, uh, to our meetings for whatever reason. And uh, Dave Kaplan and I spoke and Dave has got some thoughts on that and things that he'd like to uh, to do and uh, bring about. So that'll also be brought up uh, for discussion. And uh, well, I mentioned Bill Johnson, uh, when he made the donation, he was also brought up something, uh, how we could participate in uh, promoting getting the vaccination for COVID. Uh, so that's something we'll bring up and you know, to what extent do we want to uh, get involved either individually or uh, put the group uh, involvement uh, in. So that's something else that will be brought up for discussion. And if anyone else has anything that they would like us to uh, bring up, uh, please a short email to myself or uh, yeah, to myself would be fine. Uh, Hey, Jim, let me know. While we're on the subject of vaccination, is, is Alan Sassenwitz on the uh, on this call on the meeting on the call? No. I, I didn't see him. So I wanted to get Alan's input. Alan has some contacts. He's not. He's not on. Okay. We'll have to, we'll have to invite him separately. Invite his participation. Okay, today's speaker, uh, we've had him uh, a while back, uh, a couple of years ago, is Steve Shaw, and uh, he's uh, com company is Bond Savvy, and the, he's going to discuss the new corporate bond investing playbook uh, in light of the COVID uh, pandemic as well as just general information about bond investing. So please uh, hang in there for our uh, speaker after the meeting. On December 17th, uh, our AARP Connecticut uh, has, uh, well, National has a fraud watch network. And uh, believe it or not, I just got uh, two calls this morning, one from the Social Security Administration that I committed crimes in Texas. And uh, yeah. I, uh, we didn't know that about you. Being we've, a pain known, the, we've known that, Joe. <laughs> Good job, Joe. Being a pain in the ass uh, that I am, I answered and I pressed one and the guy said, uh, how can I help you? I said, I don't know, you called me. He says, oh, yes, what's your name? And I gave him uh, my first initial started with an F and my second initial was a Y. And he said, oh, thank you. And he hung up. <laughs> and then I got uh, the one where my doctor, uh, my medical professional recommended us for uh, monitoring, full-time monitoring. So I asked them, uh, who was the professional that... Uh, recommended me and they just said, uh, I, 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 I hung up. So, Why do you even bother to answer the phone though? So anyway, yeah, Hold it's them. prevalent and they're gonna discuss, uh, there's uh, three people from uh, Connecticut AARP that uh, put this uh, program on and they will be discussing all of these frauds and both email, phone fraud, calls, whatever. And then we have uh, two weeks off. 
And on January 7th, uh, we still have to figure out the logistics of it, but the mayor is uh, going to give us the state of the city and somehow install us as uh, new officers. So that should be interesting to say the least on how, how we're going to go about doing it. But we'll, we'll, we've gotten through most of the stuff uh, first time shots and we'll do it again. It's like a group photo. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, Stu, you might have to uh, do a little Photoshopping, get everybody's uh, photos and somehow yeah. make a montage of it. I can, we do uh, I think a, a screenshot. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. So, but you know, to, somehow just to get, like we have the officers up on our, uh, pay, our, our, our website, maybe somehow do, you know, get the 16 new officers or whatever and uh, and make a little, uh, what do we call it, montage or collage and, and post that because I don't think we're going to be able to get all 16 of us uh, together. We'll try. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we'll work it out. Ira, the floor is yours. Everyone. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, last week, we had 56 members attending. Actually, I'm not sure it's 55 and one guest or the 56 includes the guest. Anyway, I trust you all received the minutes by email. And if there are no corrections or additions, again, I'm going to turn it over to Joe to cast one vote of approval for everybody. So approved. Thank, Thank you again, you. Ira. Amen. Uh, okay. Larry. Yeah, next. Uh, happy Hanukkah to everybody. Uh, and next week, December 17th, uh, Laurie Price will do our, our investment program at 920. Uh, the following two weeks, we are off. Uh, January 7th, 2021. Joe D will lead us in a discussion on investing. And on January 14th, Bob Butke will be back to uh, tell us about the new technology that's going forward in the new year. Next slide. Uh, yesterday, we had a walk in Waveney Park. Uh, while it was cold, it wasn't windy, and we had a great uh, showing. Uh, all those, excluding Carl, who took the picture, are shown uh, there. Uh, we had two spouses, uh, and we have a picture of a fountain which has a statue which has uh, icicles running off of it to show you how cold it was. But it was invigorating, and we did about uh, a little less than two miles on the walk. It was quite pleasant. Uh, next week, the walk's going to be in Irwin Park uh, in New Canaan. Uh, Carl will be leading the walk. I will not be there, so uh, everybody have an enjoyable walk. And uh, no other activities are yet planned other than the walk. Uh, one thought about new activities in the first quarter um, that probably take place in March is, uh, you know, a lot of us play golf and instead of having a formal golf outing, we can have a get together, uh, getting some times that are uh, uh, right adjacent to one another sometime in March as soon as we would see a weather forecast. So that might be uh, a way of getting together while being separate. Um, just an idea for people to consider. Uh, I turn it over to Carl, who's got the next slide. Well, before you do that, uh, maybe even uh, since, you know, we, I, I think we had a very successful uh, golf outing in the fall. Uh, maybe let's plan 
on a golf outing and get the ball rolling on that and set a time up for uh, for June. Uh, and at least we can we can do that. I I, I think I don't know Brian. Uh, are you game for something like that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I will try and set up something for June, and you know we'll go for it as much as COVID allows us to. Yeah, I mean it, we did it uh, in the fall. It worked out uh, quite well, I thought. Uh, everybody seemed to enjoy themselves, even though we weren't able to to have meals together. Who knows by then uh, in June what will happen. But I think just getting together and being out there brought a number of people out that uh, wouldn't have been. So. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, up for, uh, I'm up for giving our spring golf outing a shot. I was under the opinion that we would be having a spring one at Sterling. And a Me fall one sterling also. Me too. Me too. Okay. Well, the one I was suggesting would be um, more informal. Yeah. No, it, it's, a, it's a great idea. But in but March, uh, you know, when uh, when you see the weather forecast, you know, just guys get on a website. We should have a uh, a pre um, you know conversation among all the people who are interested and uh, then we'd have to go book tea times or maybe you even cheat. Oh. you cheat you hit it straight you hit it good that's cheating <laughs> <laughs> i haven't swung a golf club in uh, a while but i i have it i have a tea time in florida on december 16th oh screw <laughs> you <laughs> okay next, next slide please Okay, well, the good news is we have an, a new member. Stu Madison invited uh, Gary Gepner. In fact, he, he should have been mentioned in the previous, uh, my previous slide as a visitor uh, at our previous meeting, but he, he did get an application from him and uh, he's a, a check. He's all signed up. And um, I'll have uh, at last Gary to do a, a bio at one of our future meetings, probably not until January. And um, the good news for, uh, Jerry is that uh, Gary may be interested in joining the songsters once they get uh, started up again. And he's a singer at our choir in um, at Temple Sinai. Oh, wow. Hey, nice to hear. Thank you very much for that info. I, I, Gary actually lives in the same building that I live in, and I will contact him. That's pretty convenient. You guys can practice in the hallway. <laughs> we do that all the time. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm still collecting dues. They're still trickling in. Uh, generally on a Saturday, following our Thursday meetings, I generally get an avalanche of them and uh, it tapers off during the week. So I only got two last night. Uh, we're not quite halfway to our, uh, through, the, through the membership. Uh, we've got 92 and a total membership, uh, total live, excuse me, regular members of, I think it's 100, 194 now. So I encourage you to keep the checks coming in uh, to avoid my chasing it down. There's only one more meeting, but of course the uh, the mail service continues throughout the month. So uh, send the checks in uh, at your first opportunity. I'd like to remind everybody on the phone call here and uh, people who read the slides when they're distributed later on in minutes that uh, you you do get a tax deduction for your contribution. We are a registered charitable organization. So uh, if you want to get a 2020 tax deduction in, another reason to send me your check before uh, December 31st. Good morning. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. And uh, may your increasing lights bring a lot of light to the world. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Stu to tell us about Lewis K because he was the one who reported this information to us. Stu? Yeah, uh, Lewis joined about a year or two ago and um, very nice fellow. He, I think he turned 90 yesterday, something like that. And a uh, very nice fellow, but um, unfortunately he's um, been living alone, kind of abandoned by his family 
And so I called him up. How you doing, Lewis? Um, wasn't a, wasn't a good story. I won't go into the whole thing, but he's, uh, I'm sure one of a number of people who are alone and um, not in touch with people. And so um, it would be good to uh, call Lewis, just say hi. He's a very entertaining guy to listen to. And um, as, um, as Joe said earlier, the, the board's going to try to come up with some kind of program where we can find the people who are uh, alone, you know, single people alone who just need, need a little um, human contact. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Stu. Uh, does anyone have any other news information about our members? Yes, uh, Phil, Dave Kaplan, I've got a, a couple updates. Yes. Uh, you'll recall that at the last meeting, John Sedlak uh, announced that uh, he had been diagnosed with a, a serious illness. Uh, I've been in contact with him uh, several times during the week, and he's okay with giving you uh, a bit more information. He has been diagnosed with lim lymphoma, and he's lost uh, quite a bit of weight, uh, lack of appetite, he's feeling very weak. Uh, he's still uh, pending a couple more tests before they begin treatment. But uh, John's in good spirits, and I know that he would appreciate uh, being contacted uh, by, by those of us uh, in senior men's. Uh, his phone number, if you want to uh, jot it down, and of course you can get it on the website as well, is 203-323-0222. Uh, uh, and um, also I uh, spoke with uh, Jack Austin. Uh, he's finishing up his uh, uh, cancer treatments and, uh, and very thankful for that. And uh, it, it looks like that uh, he's uh, gonna be in good shape. That's all I've got. A phone number for Jack? Um, hang on, let me grab it. Yeah, so uh, Jack Austin is uh, 203-329-2313. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyone else have anything to report? Any good news? Thank you so much. Again, happy Hanukkah to everyone. Hi, Ed Roloff. Good morning, everyone, and happy Hanukkah again. Um, it's time we look to update our contractor list uh, for people who were during this pandemic are looking to do some work around the house and want some contractors. And it's been a while since it's been done. So if everyone who has someone they've used and they like, and they can let me know, it's eproloff at outlook.com. And I'll, be, I'll add them to the list. So far I've gotten two additions and no subtractions. Um, like I said, anyone you've used that you like and can help for the little projects that we all have around the house, be happy to add them to the list and try and get it out to everybody in January. Thank you, Ed. Have a good day. Dick Harper. I'm not sure what was going on, but I mean, Ann talks to her and we find her. Ann Barbara. You want to unmute yourself, Dick? And you're muted. I know I had a little trouble reaching the mute button. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning, day. Nice, clear day. Yeah, we got a couple of interesting, very uh, contrasted books. The Splendid and the Vile about Churchill is a uh, an interesting book. It's got a lot of little fluff in it too, even though it's five hundred pages, so it goes a little faster. But Churchill was quite a guy when he got on a case. He really was uh, single-minded and very incredible. 
so we owe a lot to him because England stood against that German horde. So that's a good book. And then The Kingdom of the Ice is going to be a very different kind of book. We've read Campton, Hampton Sides before, and that's Exploring the North Pole. And any other books you want to add to the list, my email is right there. Be happy to add them on. We've got a pretty good list. We don't have enough time to read all of them. But anyhow, that's the story. Thanks, everybody. Dick, how many people are you getting participating in your uh, discussion? Group? Oh, it's around 10. Around 10? There's a few more. Yeah, maybe you want to just, uh, I mean, we've got a number of new members. Uh, you know, maybe you just want to let them know what we're doing and. Uh, Okay, we have a lot of people on the list who get the notice about each meeting. So uh, we could encourage some of those to come back and join us. Okay, and for the new members, uh, Dick runs, you know, lists uh, the books and uh, on the dates that you see once every couple of months, uh, have a discussion group and discuss the uh, the book uh, that's listed and uh, used to do it at the Ferguson Library live, but uh, yeah. right now uh, River Branch. they do it on Zoom and it's been successful. So any new members that are interested, uh, contact Mr. Dick and uh, get the book and join in and let him know that uh, you're interested and you'll be part of the invitation for the uh, book club uh, meeting. Thanks for the good Just some additional information on that. We usually meet on Wednesdays at 1.30. Okay. Uh, Our guest speaker has joined us. Oh. Welcome, Steve. Our uh, slide is up again for the food bank and uh, not to belabor the point, uh, they need our donations. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone was gonna check, Stu, I think. Uh, I, I uh, or Jack. I called her. Just, um, Joe, you hear me? Yes. yes. I uh, spoke to Kate and uh, she seems to be getting some, but she really hasn't uh, kept count of it. And unfortunately, because um, I would like to know, we at one time were up to 2000. And, um, and then she got an envelope with 10, 10 or 12 checks in it. So she's given us credit for that because she doesn't know where it came from. So anyway, that's where I got out of it. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever it is, I mean, uh, the fact is that, yes, they do need uh, support. And uh, please, you know, support them. And, and if you send a check, let them know that it's from SM, you know, you're a senior uh, men's association member, or if you do it online, uh, you can uh, click off uh, in honor of and put the uh, SMAS. Yeah. Okay. And Next. She does need okay, Alan. All right. Good morning. Uh, Eversource uh, just announced it's. Uh, uh, a supply rate uh, for the next six months, starting January 1, at 8.4 cents uh, per kilowatt hour. Uh, so now is the uh, ideal time to review uh, who is your supplier for electricity and uh, consider uh, switching uh, to uh, the one that uh, would give you the uh, lowest rate for uh, the next six months. The uh, first line of uh, numbers there uh, show uh, for the period a year back, uh, uh, starting uh, July of 19, uh, the rates of 8.1 and 9.4, uh, interestingly enough, 
are uh, well above the rates for the past six months and the six months going forward. So uh, the good news is uh, even at the uh, higher rate that, uh, that are available from Eversource, um, the rates uh, have come down about 10% um, from the prior 12 month period, which is, uh, which is, kind of, which is of course is good news. Um, the next line though indicates that at this stage, um, as there usually has been in the past, an opportunity to switch to a lower cost provider um, and uh, doing so right now uh, for the first six months of uh, 2021, 20, uh, you'll save about 11%, uh, which for the average home is about $7 a month. And so it would save you about uh, $40 for the uh, period uh, ahead. Uh, net of it is, you know, it's, it's not a bad uh, return. It might take you about 10 minutes to, to switch over and, you know, you'll be able to uh, pocket about $40 for the effort. I mean, it won't uh, pay your rent for a month, but uh, it's, it's sitting out there uh, if you want to uh, capture it. Uh, the name of the provider um, that uh, I had looked up and checked again last night um, is this Starian Energy. Uh, so that is the web address for it. Uh, or uh, even easier, uh, you can call the 800 number for them and, and do it over the phone. So whichever is uh, you feel more comfortable, more facility with, um, the rate that they're currently offering is uh, 7.49 cents per kilowatt hour uh, for the, the, the upcoming six months, and there's no cancellation fee. Um, so as always uh, with this uh, uh, process, um, come uh, the end of June, uh, middle of June, uh, you'll be wanting to look again at um, what's available for the forward six months and, and switch at that point. Um, if you do have a lock-in from some provider uh, that has a cancellation fee, then you'll have to wait uh, and see what's available uh, after that the lock-in period is over. And finally, um, this uh, website that's marked at the bottom of the slide um, is the one that you can uh, go to and um, you know look up what the current offers are. Uh, they may have 20 or 30 different uh, companies uh, out there and, um, and choose one that is uh, at that point um, the, the best one uh, uh, for you. Uh, but the trick would be if, if you have the flexibility right now, uh, yes. go ahead and, and sign up with uh, Sterian um, and you'll be all set for the first half of uh, uh, 2021. Uh, anyone have a quick question? All right. Good luck with uh, with looking into it. Hey, thanks, Alan. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there any items uh, that be brought up for discussion? Anybody want to uh, bring something up? Sorry. Okay. Uh, any jokes? <clears throat> Two Allens aren't uh, aren't participating today, so uh, a no joke day. Without Allen, there's no jokes. <laughs> oh, there he is. Unmute yourself, Alan. Got it. So the one time I went to the racetrack with a, a date years ago, um, I saw a priest in the stables who was blessing this horse. And son of a gun, that horse won the race. And the next wet race, I went down and I saw him again blessing this horse. And the third time I went down, he um, doing his motions and so on. And the horse's name was Sure Shot. So I went right up to the window and I bet some money on sure shot. The horse comes in last. So I go and see the priest and I say, you know, what's the story with this? 
He says, you're not Catholic, are you? I said, no, I'm Jewish. He said, well, that explains it because you don't know the difference between a blessing and last rites. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just for uh, everyone's information, uh, I, uh, together with Dave Kaplan and myself, we went to the Fish Church, and uh, Debbie sends her regards to everybody, but uh, I, I retrieved the defibrillator, and the reason being is that the pads were uh, expiring, uh, their shelf life was over, and uh, the battery was uh, that was installed, it was installed in, uh, in for the better part of uh, two years, and that was uh, reaching, you know, uh, becoming problematic, going to be problematic. And, and uh, they, they informed me that uh, the, the AED people, that the alarm would go off, stating that either the pad or the battery was expiring. And uh, it would have been interesting because it was in the uh, lo unlocked lock cabinet. Uh, evidently, somebody hey, left it unlocked. Uh, but uh, it would have raised havoc if anybody heard this alarm going off. So the uh, people at the service and sold us the unit recommended that I take it. And uh, it is now at my house and it's deactivated. The batteries are out so that uh, nobody would inadvertently uh, try to use it uh, without proper batteries or pads. So uh, when we go back to uh, meeting live again as a group, I will then uh, contact them and get the necessary uh, replacements. Uh, we didn't even want to, they didn't even want to sell me the replacements at this point because it could be you know, six months, uh, worst case, a year before we got back as a group. And they didn't want to, you know, to lose the, uh, they, they, evidently the pads uh, have a shelf life. Uh, there's something in there that gets uh, inactive. Uh, I think it's the adhesive. So in any event, uh, so that everybody knows that the uh, defibrillator is now residing in my house uh, deactivated. I think you're going to get it recertified. Joe, uh, I think it has to be recertified by a professional. What, the uh, the unit? Yeah, because... No, 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 the unit, uh, they just said, uh, put the... All we'd have to do is put in if, uh, when the time comes, if the uh, pads are, uh, the one pad that we have that's old, uh, and the battery, uh, we just replace them. I mean, it's a normal, uh, it would be just like a normal replacement. Yeah. The, the, the certification is the, uh, and Joe D was uh, involved with that, certifying the, uh, the people who would be uh, admit, you know, uh, oh, that, yeah. Using the defibrillators, that's what needs, uh, you know, they, they're the ones that need certification every however many years. Um, Larry, uh, just to let you know, uh, for those who like fish and seafood, there is supposed to be a new uh, fish and seafood store opening on High Ridge Road. Uh, it's a block, it's on uh, the northbound side on the right. Uh, in that little strip of shops uh, about a block before um, where uh, Turner River Hardware used to be. So uh, I don't know exactly when it's opening, but uh, uh, there is a sign coming soon. So uh, if you like fish, um, stay tuned. Uh, would be a new addition to uh, 
um, shopping options for uh, food. That's the the old they still call it the yeah, Willard Williams. Willard Plaza. Yep. Okay, guys, it's uh, time now 